Hey everybody. Today we're talking a little bit about bivariate distributions of discrete random variables. We're in a situation where we have more than one discrete random variable. In this vid I'm going to stick to two of them, but the uh, ideas generalize very directly. Call them big X and big Y, and we're interested in their joint distribution. That is, probabilities of different combinations of values of those two random variables. A bit more specifically, we want to know the probability that the first random variable is equal to some value, call it little x, and the second random variable is equal to some other value, call it little y. This is called the joint probability mass function, and it's typically abbreviated little f of x comma y. So here we're in a situation where we're talking about a function of two variables. Everything gets clearer when we get into an example, so here's one. We have uh, two random variables, x and y, with this joint probability distribution. So what you're seeing in this table is probabilities for the specific combinations of x and y. So these are all AND statements. For instance, to do the probability that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3, we're looking in this table for in the row where x is 2, that's the second row from the top, and the column where y equals 3, so that's the third column from the left. And so of course that is 0.07. Slightly more complicated example, the probability that x is equal to 2 or y is equal to 3. So this event can happen in multiple different ways. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up the probabilities from all the cells that satisfy this condition. And you can see when x is 2, we have two different possibilities. When y is 3, we have three different possibilities, but there's one that overlaps there. We plug in all those values, add them all up, we get 0.46, a 46% chance of that event. Whenever you have a joint probability mass function like this one, you have to have three things be true. And they're all very logical, I think, and intuitive. First of all, the probability mass function has to be between 0 and 1 inclusive for any combination of values x and y. It's a probability, so it can't be negative and it can't be bigger than 100%. Secondly, all of the probabilities have to add up to 1. It's a discrete probability distribution, joint probability distribution, so you're going to have a, um, a countable number of combinations here. You can actually sum them all up and you should get one. Finally, if you have any event, then uh, let's call it A, this is going to consist of a countable number, possibly finite number of outcomes. And so you compute the probability of the event just by adding up all of the individual values of that joint probability mass function. Naturally, we can still consider either one of the random variables separately. This is called a marginal probability mass function. And you get a marginal probability mass function for one of the random variables by adding up over the other one. So for instance, to get the marginal probability mass function for x, this is the top row here, we are taking each individual value of x, holding it fixed, and then summing over all the, other, all the values of y. And this will just give you a simple function of that value of x that you're talking about. All right, so let's go back to that example that we started with. This is the same table as before, and uh, just get some marginal totals. So for instance, I'm taking that first row, adding up all the values, 0 0.12, 0 0.10, and 0 0.09 to get 0 0.31. That's the probability that x is equal to 1. Similarly, the probability that x is equal to 2 is 0.25 adding up 0.18 and 0.07, all the different values that y could take when x is 2, and so on. This illustration also, I think, makes it very clear why we're using the phrase marginal probability and marginal PMF, because we're actually putting these in the margins. Um, now, both f sub x and f sub y are going to be probability mass functions in their own right, they need to add up to 1, and of course their individual values are going to be between 0 and 1. Last thing I want to talk about here is that two random variables, x and y, with a bivariate distribution, are said to be independent when the probability mass function, the joint probability mass function, is always equal to the probability of the marginal probability mass functions for the corresponding values. If this fails for even one value, then the random variables are said to be dependent. 
So let's go back to this example and, uh, and take a look. Here we can look, for instance, at uh, x equals 1 and y equals 2. And just from looking at that table, you can see that when x is 1 and y is 2, we have a joint probability mass of 0.12, the probability that x is 1 and y is 2. On the other hand, if we take the corresponding marginal probability mass functions, that would be 0.31 for f sub x and 0.56 for f sub y, and we multiply those, we get 0.17. And obviously that's not equal to 0.12. And therefore, these um, random variables are not independent. We say they're dependent. One last example. Suppose we have two random variables, x and y, with this joint probability mass function. So it's c times x squared times y for some unknown value of c. And x and y can take only five combinations of possibilities, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, and so on. So first we want to find that value c, and then we want to compute the marginal probability mass functions f sub x and f sub y. Once we've done that, we'll determine whether or not these two random variables are independent or not. Okay, so if this is actually a legitimate probability mass function, then when we add up all of the different probabilities for all the different values that we have in the support, we should get 1. So f of 1, 1, f of 1, 2, and so on. So I'm just going to plug in and get this. For instance, when x is 1 and y is 1, I get c times x squared y is c times 1 or just c. When I do that for all five of these combinations of variable values, I get 38c. So 38c has to be equal to 1, c is equal to 1 38th, and the probability mass function is 1 38th times x squared y. So there we have it. Let's get these uh, marginal probability mass functions using this joint probability mass function. So first we'll do x, and we'll just compute the different marginal probabilities. So f sub x of 1, what's the probability that x is equal to 1? Well, we add up all of the different probability mass probability masses for when x is 1. And that means 1, 1 and 1, 2. And when we do that, we get 3 thirty-eighths. Similarly, f sub x of 2 is 8 thirty-eighths, and f sub x of 3 is going to be 27 thirty-eighths. And you can notice that those all add up to 1. That's just a quick check on the arithmetic here. If, uh, if we don't get 1, we know we made a mistake somewhere in here. Similarly for y, and I'll just flash this at you, there's only two possibilities of y. y can be 1 and y can be 2. There's no possibility that y is equal to 3 here. We get f sub y of 1 is 10 thirty-eighths, and f sub y of 2 is 28 thirty-eighths. Um, again, these add up to 1. I haven't bothered to reduce my fractions here. So here are the two marginal probability mass functions written down all at once. Let's conclude by showing that these two random variables are not independent from one another. Here's the condition. For every combination of values that we see up in the top right, x comma y, we have to have x, f of x comma y equals f sub x of x times f sub y of y. And uh, you can just try plugging in some of those values. So for instance, starting with the very first one, when x is 1 and y is 1, um, multiplying the two, pro the two marginal probability mass functions gives 0.021. And the value of the, pro of the joint probability mass function, f of 1 comma 1, is 1 38th or 0.026. These two are not the same, and therefore these random variables are not independent of one another.